ready? Yep. Hi, it's Firefighter John. Firefighter Jason here. And we're here at Brunswick Fire Station, Central Station, right off of Main Street. So did you know that this station is over 100 years old? It was built in 1919. And back then they had horses and hay. They had to store the hay upstairs with ladders so that way the horses wouldn't come up where they lived. Now, of course, we keep fire trucks and ambulances here. And Jason, let's show them where we work and live for 24 hours of the day. Okay, All sounds right. good. Let's go take a look. All right. All right, Jason, let's show them what's behind the big door. Sounds good. Okay, so here we are in the captain's office. Um, this room does not only act as his office, but as you see, there's a bed here. This is where the captain stays while he's on shift. Uh, we work 24 hour shifts here. So he does his reports here at the desk, uh, sleeps here, and always on the ready. He keeps all his extra uniforms here, things like that. In here is the old dispatch office. It's now known as Patty's office. It's like the brain of the fire station at Central. Years before we had 911 call centers, there's a panel over here that has a radio. It runs all the doors and then we can actually tone out for the fire calls. We used to have one of the members, there was, used to be a bed in here and they'd have to hang out here the whole shift and they'd listen for the phone calls to ring and then they'd wake up the crew here and push the, the bells and whistles and alarms on and we'd go out to the, wherever the address was that you were having your emergency. So here we are in our day room. Because we work 24 hour shifts, we're here for a long time and if there are no calls going on, this is a room that we can come to, sit down, rest, uh, sometimes we also use this room as a place to watch training videos and if we are in this room and we have a call and we need to immediately get down to the fire trucks or ambulance, we have our fire pole here. So we open this hatch and this leads right down to the apparatus base. And kids, there's another bedroom. This is our biggest bedroom in the central station. It's got three beds in here. We've got 12 lockers along the wall. So all the different guys and girl get to keep their extra bedding in here. Uh, extra uniforms. When we get here in the morning, we throw our extra stuff on our bed that we're going to sleep on that day. And later on in the evening, after dinner time, we usually come in here and make our bed so that way when we're ready to go to bed, it's all made up. And in the morning, we pick it all up and we leave for the day, put it all the way back in our locker. Downstairs, and we'll show them the kitchen, the gym, that kind of stuff. Okay, sounds good. And then don't forget our friendly firefighter, Ian. Wash your hands. Okay, so here we are in the basement level of Central Station. Um, this is our gym. So we as firefighters need to maintain a certain level of health and fitness. So during the shift, if we have time between calls, we come down here, uh, we can work out, lift weights, or just run on the treadmill. All right, kids, now we're looking at Central Station kitchen. This is most important because we all love food and we're here for 24 hours so we have to figure out lunches, dinners, and sometimes breakfast like on a Saturday or Sunday morning. What we do is we get together and we figure out what we feel like we want to eat for lunch and or dinner and we'll go to the store and grab it. So that's why you'll see us at Hannaford or Shaw's or sometimes Walmart grabbing our food for the day. 
when we get back, get ready for lunch, one of us will make the meal and then we all get to see how good they made it. And then for dinner, same thing. And hopefully it's a really good meal because some guys, they just can't cook. Other ones, they're like chefs. Some of them can't boil water, for sure. That's gross. <laughs> okay, kids, so now we're in what we call our apparatus bay. This is where we keep all our fire trucks, uh, ambulance, but we also keep our gear here in our lockers. So let's let's go over here and we'll show you where our lockers are and what we keep in them for gear. So as you see, we have lockers for every member here. We this got happens, firefighter Jason right, right here. This happens to be firefighter Jason's locker. So in here, I keep my helmet up here. And in the locker, I keep all my gear, my turnout gear, my mask, my vest, my radio. And I actually have a second set of gear too, just in case I get the first, if I use the first set of gear on a fire, we're supposed to wash it. And then I take the second set of gear and use it for the rest of the shift. All right, so next let's uh, head over here. Here you see we have our what we call our utility truck. This is uh, the truck that we use basically to run errands, but we also use it out on traffic accidents. Um, we keep cones in it, signs to slow traffic down, that type of thing. Um, Firefighter John, you want to talk to the kids about our rescue boat? Sure. <clears throat> Back here we've got our new rescue boat. It's a fire boat. There's no fire pumps on it, but what we use it for is water rescues out on the river, ponds, and the ocean. Uh, we can take two or three of our firefighter friends, and we've got all kinds of tools and equipment and throw bags and stuff like that to go out and try to find somebody out on the water and rescue them, pull them inside the boat, and get them back to safety. And we usually have an ambulance with us, so that way we can warm them up and dry them off. And then back here, we've got our for one of our forestry trucks or brush trucks that we use for wood fires. So we can take a look at that really quick. Okay, so like Firefighter John said, if we have what we call a brush fire, it's in the woods, it's hard to get a big fire engine in there to fight that fire. So these trucks are set up with special gear just to fight brush fires. Um, back here we have, we have a lot of brush gear that that we use like backpacks that carry water we can go into the woods with them and cool down hot spots where the fire is um, we have axes shovels that type of thing this truck actually does have a tank of water on it this is the water tank right here and we'll come around to the back here we have what we call booster lines these are small lines that come off this this roll of this reel of hose and we can pull those way into the woods and pump the water from the tank through the line to the fire. If we come around here, this is the actual fire pump that pumps the water from the tank through the hoses. And then as we walk around to this side, you'll see we have another toolbox. And this is where we keep things like chainsaws, small water pumps, even a winch in case the brush truck gets stuck. Okay, now uh, John's going to show you one of our ambulances right here. Sure. So at both stations we have two ambulances. The first one's out on the call right now and what we call the backup or backline rescue is still sitting here so we can take a quick look. The front is just a van but it has a lot of light switches in there where we can turn on the lights, run the siren, and it has a radio. We can talk to our dispatch center and let them know we're going out on the call. When, uh, what we'll do is we'll go around the truck really quick and I'll show you all the different doors inside this big tall door. If somebody is really sick and they need oxygen, we have this great big tank that has, is full of oxygen. We also carry other stuff on it as well. We're getting at the end of the snow season 
And unfortunately, tomorrow they're talking about a little bit more snow, but we usually keep a shovel on board, so it helps us when we got to help somebody out when they're sick during a snowstorm. We want to shovel off their walkway so we're safe going in and getting them on the stretcher and bringing them back out. Up top, we also carry a couple of vests for water rescues, because if somebody goes in the water, falls in the river or whatever, a lot of times, like I said, the ambulance is going to go so that way we can help save the person get them all dried off and check them out. And we want to be safe ourselves, so that's why we have the vests. Some of these other doors, we carry all kinds of things to help people that have broken backs, legs, anything like that, splint stuff. Uh, in these bag, these totes down here, as if is like a hazmat material spill, and we have to clean some people up that got chemicals on them. And in this, because of the COVID, the virus, we have this backpack sprayer. And we use that so we can spray down a chemical to clean out the back of the ambulance if we have somebody that's really sick with the virus. So we're always protecting. In all of our trucks, we have some way of putting out a fire. So we have a little tiny fire extinguisher there that we can at least help put out some sort of little fires with. Close this. This next door back this is where we keep a couple of our air packs and some firefighting tools because we're firefighters and EMS people. So if there's a, a fire call, we can also, all of our firefighting gear goes in here and hangs up on our backpacks and our boots will be down here and helmets up on the top shelf. So we, like if firefighter Jason and I were going and we're coming back from the hospital and there's a fire, we're going to take the ambulance to that fire and we can dress up just like regular firefighters and get there and help out the fire engine. And like I said, we've got tools here to make sure we can do everything we need to do. A couple of big flashlights, the box lights. So it makes us ready to go for anything that we're going to deal with. And now inside the ambulance, it's basically like a doctor office on wheels. We have a stretcher that we'll bring out of the whole truck, take it into the house or up by the front door and get your sick grandmother or whoever is injured, put them on the stretcher, bring them back and put them up in here. And then we've got a monitor where we can take their blood pressures, we can check their heart, we can do all kinds of stuff with that. Just like, have you ever had at the doctor's office when they take your blood pressure and it squeezes your arm for just a minute and then they say it's okay, it's all done? That does the same thing. Up in all of these different compartments, we have bandages, we have all kinds of different things, cold packs to help people out or if they've got burned or even if we need to give them some medicine. Up in that roll up garage door looking thing, we have drug boxes that we can give them medicine and make them feel better until we get them to the hospital. And then once we take them to the emergency room, we, this whole bed comes back out and we take them inside and then firefighter Jason and I will slide them over onto the hospital bed and tell the nurse what's really going on and then we get to come back and put this all back together and be ready for the next call. So right now I'm going to take firefighter Jason's blood pressure just like at the doctor's office so that way you'll know that it doesn't really hurt him. So it goes on your upper arm like this, just wraps around and then it gives it a hug. Push this special button here and you can see the numbers where it's starting to get tight giving his arm a hug. And then once it gets to the top number, then it goes and releases, it relaxes, stops the big bear hug on him. And then this one goes on one of your fingers and it can tell us how much oxygen you have in your blood. Firefighter Jason, is that really hurting you? Yeah, it's hugging my arm a little bit, but nah, it's not that bad at all. Pretty good. And then it takes a few minutes and then we're all done with the blood pressure. So I can take that off and then once this is done reading his numbers, it tells me how fast his heart's beating up here. So we can tell a lot of stuff, just like at the doctor's office, and we're driving you to the hospital at the same time. Okay, so next we'll head over here and we'll talk a little bit about our tank truck. So our tank truck here is the oldest truck that we have at Brunswick Fire um, and its purpose is to basically carry water when we're in an area that doesn't have fire hydrants. And its job is to supply either the lead engine or the brush truck uh, with water. 
So what do you think? Should we go over to the board and see who's working today? Yeah, let's go take a look at that. So that way people can see how we track who's driving what, who's riding where, and who's working on the ambulance. So the way this board works is it's divided down the center. Even though there's no line, it shows who's working at Central Station today. We've got Captain Fairbanks, and we've got the different firefighters that are working for the captain today. Firefighter Loring's driving the lead engine, and Firefighter Merrill's driving the second engine. And then Claire Dufort, our firefighter girl, she's the firefighter for the day riding tailboard on the truck. And then when an ambulance goes out, it tells, they've just got initials, but it tells who's going on the front ambulance, and then if their second ambulance has to go out of here, then the captain and his driver for the engine will go out. Over at Emerson Station today, we've got Lieutenant Milson, and we've got Firefighter Coslett, St. Pierre, and Baden. They're all working out there. And Coslett is going to drive either the tower truck or the engine today, and then Firefighter St. Pierre is going to be riding on the tailboard. He'll be the actual firefighter dragging the hose and putting the fire out. And then up above, if you want to take a look, it just shows all of our apparatus and then what is going on. If somebody's out on the call right now or they're coming back from the fire call. Okay, Firefighter John, uh, speaking of Emerson Station, why don't we head out there next and yeah. see what's going on out there? Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll take a look and we'll show the other station. Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. 